bug out bags. Are they really needed in the UK? Let's check it out. There are things we must leave this place. Hello, welcome back to the channel. Thanks for clicking on and selecting to watch my videos. Now, bug out bags. If you look on YouTube, there's like a million videos on them. They're everywhere. And they're all different, aren't they? What are they all about? And do we actually need bug out bags here in the UK? Now you find me in the garage today because here in Wales, it hasn't stopped raining for about six, seven days. One day, it started raining. And it didn't quit for four months. That's what it feels like. And it's, um, it's absolutely soaking out there. So I thought I'd do the video indoors. I've been revamping the website over the last few days. And part of that was the bug out bags. Now previously I had a, a range of bug out bags that were pre-filled with all the equipment needed and selling them as a complete kit with or without the bag. But what I found is sometimes certain elements of that kit, or certain items I should say, they're out of stock with the suppliers. So I couldn't sell the bag as a whole. So the kits I had were the EDC, everyday carry, I had the 24, the 48, the 72 bug out bags, plus the bug out NCB bag, never coming back, or inch bag you could call it, plus I had the bug out bag for kids. Now I still got them on the website, but not as a complete kit. So what you do now, you choose your bag you want, then you go for the items, whether it's shelter equipment, um, fire lighting equipment, first aid, and you pick and choose which bits you want. And then if they're not in stock, obviously you can't select them. That way, if something is out of stock, you can still buy the rest of the kit, can't you? And then just add something else in the future. So I thought when I was doing that, I thought let's do a talk on bug out bags and do we really need them here in the UK? Now first of all, you may ask, what is a bug out bag, isn't it? Well, some people call it a go bag, grab bag, but it's basically just a bag full of gear, equipment that you grab at a moment's notice, vacate your current location, where it's at home, work, wherever it is, and then you bug out or leave to another location. And then you've got your bag of goodies to keep you going for an X amount of time. That makes sense. Now, if you go on YouTube, you'll see a plethora of bug out bag videos everywhere. And they're all slightly different. Obviously, each bug out bag will be different depending on who the person is, what gear they want, location, where they are in the world, what disaster or event are they preparing against. Plus, the time of year will make a difference as well. Perhaps in the summertime, you'll carry less, you don't need sleeping bags or warm clothes or whatever it is and obviously in the winter time you might have to carry more and then why would you need a bug out bag it's just an insurance policy isn't it just like most things in emergency preparedness now you could be living in an area where there's flash flooding and you need to vacate the house pretty quick or there could be a fire in the street and they're evacuating the, the whole street there could be a natural disaster there could be a terrorist attack and you need to to run for your life isn't it and it could be any number of reasons but if you took two lots of people and they both had to vacate the house pretty quick, say they lived on the same street. One lot had their heads screwed on and they got bug out bags, and the other lot hasn't. When they do have to go to a safer location, people with their bug out bags are obviously going to be a bit more prepared, a bit more comfortable with the supplies they've got, aren't they? Now you think this will never happen, what a ridiculous idea. You only have to look back in hurricanes, Katrina, and all them natural disasters all over the world, and more recently in Israel, isn't it? If you think of them poor people in the kibbutz in Israel, they went to bed thinking, it's just another day, wake up nice and early, get to work. No, plans changed today pretty quick. And um, yeah, disasters can hit when you least expect them, can't they? So yeah, terrorist attacks, they can happen anywhere at any time, can't they? And the way the world is at the moment, how volatile it is, who knows what's going to happen and where. And I think just pays well to be prepared, doesn't it? That's some serious shit. So what we're going to do now quickly is just run through some possible items you may consider in a 48 hour bag and some alternatives which I got in my bag. It's just a few items in there that are similar to what you could pack in a 48 hour bag and just like say a different take on it. But you just got to remember everybody's different, the situation's always different so no two bug out bags are going to be exactly the same are they? And remember if you bug it out for whatever reason it could be in the middle of the night, it could be early hours in the morning, it could be raining, it could be snowing, it could be a beautiful sunny day, who knows isn't it? But there are always essentials that you do need no matter what the situation. That's food, shelter, and water, isn't it? So, we have a look at this bag. Got some snacks, some energy drinks. A 
a couple of days worth of MREs. Now you could use freeze dried meals, you probably wouldn't need as many because more calories and lighter to carry. Downside is you need to hydrate them today with water. These you can eat cold, eat them on the move. Now if you do want to warm your food up, you need a cooker, don't you? Now you can have a little gas cooker. If the gas runs out or the stops working, you're knackered, didn't you? So keep it simple. A folding stove, whether it's a BCB or the old Hexamine burners. If you run out of fuel, you can burn twigs on it, can't you? So that's your food in your cooker. We'll see what's in this bag. It's basically the same. So I'd have MREs, some snacks, some drinks. And I have got some high calorie snacks as well. Plenty of sugar, gives you plenty of energy and tastes bloody lovely as well. Now I do have a folding cooker, hexi burner. Again, the upside of the hexi burner, you don't have to light the fire either. Just a small flame. So yeah, more or less the same. The only difference I've got in this bag is I do carry a couple of flame receiver packs. No need to light your fire. Just a little bit of water. Bob's your auntie Jim. You've got hot food. Now if you are heating up water to, to warm your food up, you need something to heat it in, don't you? So in this one, we've just gone for a 58 pattern Osprey water bottle and a Crusader mug. Easy peasy, stick this on the burner or open flame to heat your water up and obviously this then to collect your water isn't it. Now in my bag something slightly different. It's a titanium cup or cooking pot and a stainless steel Nalgene bottle. Just a different take on it and they're all available on the website. I just find this is a better option for me. The upside of the stainless steel water bottle as well is if you take the top off you can boil your water straight in the bottle. So that's my little upgrade option I carry in the bag, but both options do the same job. Now you've got your water, you've got your stove, you've got your food ready, you're starving, but you need to light your fire, then you're going to light the fire with. So in this 48 hour bag, just got a couple of options, some weatherproof matches and a little ferro rod, I think it's the Ranger. But in my bag, my go-to is my fire tin. You never know, it could be snowing, heavy rain, everything's soaking wet. So the more options you've got to light the fire, the better. So that goes in my bag, is the fire tin. Now, you've got your fire going, your water's on the boil, your food's lovely and warm, how are you gonna eat it? Spork, isn't it? Yeah. And I carry in my bag, just a titanium version. So yeah, pretty simple, straightforward item, but uh, yeah, you try and eat in your all day breakfast with your fingers, isn't it? Better off using a spork. Now, because it's only a 48 hour bag, and you're only talking a couple of days, couple of three days, you might not want to carry all the MREs. You could just top for a pack of emergency rations. One box of these is nine servings of 271 calories per serving. So that's enough to see you through for a couple of days. So yeah, lighter to carry. Takes up less room, obviously. But they don't quite taste as good as a chicken curry. But in an emergency situation, these would do. So another thing you need, so obviously you've got your food. It's water, isn't it? Not just for cooking, but for drinking as well. So you make sure you've got clean water. So one option. There's a good old Puri tabs. Pre-filter your water first through a piece of clothing or a shamag. Drop one of these in your water bottle and then hey presto you've got some safe drinking water. But a better option is some sort of water filter isn't it? Fill this up for the water, squeeze, you've got safe drinking water coming out the other side. Great little item to put in a 48 hour bug out bag. Yes I carry Puri tabs as a bit of a backup but I like to carry um, a water purifying bottle so not just a filter but a purifier as well fill this up with any sort of water pop the lid squeeze and you've got safe clean drinking water so that's your food your water sorted next thing to consider is your shelter isn't it you know you may have to sleep in the elements and the elements could be rubbish couldn't they you know it might not always be a, a nice sunny day a nice warm night so yeah shelter so keeping it basic in the 48 hour pack again these are just some options, you've got your own options you can choose. Poncho. So, good thing about a poncho, you can form a basic shelter with it, but if it does start raining and you haven't got a coat, you can slip this on and over top of your bag and keep yourself dry. Now, it's not a great shelter for a long period of time, but for a one-off or a couple of days shelter, 
yeah, a poncho will do the job. Now to make it into a shelter, some bungee cords, maybe a bit of paracord. So with them three items, you can make a makeshift shelter. In my bag, I got my cordage kit. So in here, I got some pegs, some bank line instead of the paracord, got a few jungle knots, and I got bungees as well. So in here, I can form multiple of the shelters with this cordage kit. And the shelter I've gone for is a poncho, but this time it's the Helicon Tex poncho. Does the same job, keeps you dry, and you can form a shelter with it. Now there's other options you can choose. Lightweight bashers, army issue basher, hammocks, small one-man tents. So yeah, there's loads of different options. You just gotta consider how much they weigh and how much room they take up. So that's your shelter, but you need to keep warm, don't you? So part of your shelter system should be some way of keeping you warm. So keeping it basic, keeping it simple, keeping it lightweight. So you've got foil blankets, survival bags you can get in, bad weather bags. All of them can go in a 48 hour bugger bag. Yes, you're not gonna have the most comfortable night sleep ever if you do sleep, but it's just for a couple of nights, isn't it? I'm sure you can survive. Now in my bag, I've upgraded a little bit better. A very small lightweight blow up mattress to sleep on. Plus I got the Helicon Tech Swagman. You can wear it to keep you warm. You can sleep in it like a sleeping bag and you can roll it out like a, like a blanket or quilt. Now another option could be a bivy bag together with a small seating bag or wool blanket. But again, it's your personal choice, isn't it? And the weather and what time of year will determine what you need to carry in your bag. So that's your food, your shelter, your water, and other things, because you're at night, a little headlamp, isn't it? So a little cheap, inexpensive headlight can go in your bug out bag, or 48 hour bag. In my bag, again, is a headlamp and flashlight all in one. This is the Army Tech. I'm trialing at the moment. I'm gonna make a video on this soon. Great torch. Or oh, flashlight. Real bright. Now, there's only a couple more items in this bag. This 48 hour bug out bag. That's the first aid kit. Just a simple first aid kit will do. You gotta think, right, what's the situation? I'm not using a chainsaw. I'm not using massive blades. So I'm not gonna need tourniquets, field dressings. Just a simple first aid pack will do. With perhaps maybe some blister plasters. My kit, I've got a bit more substantial first aid kit, but yeah, I say it's not really needed. But that's just my personal kit. Now the 48 hour bag, you're not going full Rambo. You're not living in the woods, so you don't need machetes and huge bloody knives everywhere. Just a simple lock knife or a small multi-tool. That's probably all you need. Just a couple of simple tools just to cut paracord or whatever. I know you see some of these videos from these guys showing off their big katana swords and, and uh, massive machetes and all sorts of zombie killers. What, what you gonna use it for, isn't it? You know, let's be realistic. Now in my bag, I have gone a little bit further and I have put the bushcraft knife in. But yeah, it's not over the top, it's just a simple, straightforward bushcraft knife. So the last ready thing in here is a emergency whistle. <whistles> but apart from that, that's the 48 hour bug out bag that I put together here. But I say on the website, there's all the different options for adding more kit. And if you do want to add more kit, like sleeping bags and whatever, there's options for bigger bags. I quite like these 40 litre uh, Highlander bags. 600 denier material, really tough good zips and not too tactical looking. Now if you are worried about your bugger bag looking too tactical, just get yourself a rain cover, put it over the top and get them in multiple different colors. Now my bag, I have got a few extra items. So some extra layers, warm clothing, a pair of socks, a scarf or shamag, good pair of gloves, warm hat, bit of tape. Never know if you have to fix anything. Midgy head net, comms if you're out in the group and some binoculars. So there we are guys, here's a quick run through of what you could possibly take in a 48 hour bug out bag. I'd say the options are endless, but all I'd say is 48 hours, it's not a long period of time. You could probably survive in, with an overcoat and a pack of peanuts if you really wanted. But you've got to consider who you're traveling with, you know, family, kids, whatever. Where you are, location, the weather, the time of year, all that sort of stuff. All that's got to go into consideration of what you've got to pack. All I'd say is don't pack for every eventuality because you never carry everything. Just pack the bare essentials to keep yourself fed, watered, and warm and dry. Now, when it comes to the UK, it's not that wild. There's not that vast, open wilderness that you'll see in other parts of the world. So when it comes to bugging out, where's everybody gonna go? So yeah, no matter where you are in the UK, even if you're in the most rural of places, you walk a few hours, never mind a couple of days, 
you're going to bump into some sort of civilization, whether it's a road, houses, or other people. Hello. Hi there. You bugging out as well? Yeah, I'm bugging out. Are you bugging out? Yeah, me too. I think everybody is. Stay safe. I'll see you around. Okay, Ian. See you later. Bye bye. So that being said, is it worth getting a bug out bag here in the UK? Well, in my opinion, it wouldn't hurt, would it? Especially if you're in an urban environment, city. There's all sorts of people living in these days, aren't there? And uh, just like in 2007, a terrorist attack can happen any time, can't it? If you are in that sort of situation and you need to bug out with your family, it's a good idea to have a bug out bag as well, isn't it? You could be in a rural location where your house is prone to flooding or forest fires, or hill fires, anything like that. So it doesn't have to be zombie apocalypse. It could be any natural disaster. If you look at other countries, the governments tell them to make sure they got some sort of emergency bag, grab bag, get home bag. So yes, in the UK, I think we should be doing the same as well. So there we are guys. If you wanna have a go building your own bug out bag, get on the website, choose a bag, big enough to, to suit your needs, and then choose the items to go in it. Plus there's some other videos on my YouTube channel there's one there where I put one into practice. If you've got any ideas what should go in a bugger bag, drop them in the comments below. Be happy to have a look at them. And if you've got any questions, just drop us an email. If you haven't done so already, please think about liking and subscribing. Hit the notification bell and a thumbs up. And uh, thanks for watching and I'll catch you next time. All the best.